How's it, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Game Nights. Huge thanks, as always, to Wizards of the Coast for sponsoring this show. Now, I got to admit, it's a little bit weird to be here alone without Jimmy. If you haven't heard, he's going to be absent for a few months. He's got a really big project that he's working on. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to reveal anything about it yet, but we'll give you updates when we are. Luckily, in the meantime, we've been able to secure some really awesome guests to cover him while he's gone. In fact, we've got a newcomer to Game Nights, Kyle Hill from the Because Science YouTube channel, and we've got returning fan favorites Mel Lee and Cassius Marsh. Now, you may have guessed, we're going to be battling it out with the brand new Commander 2018 product, if you see any cards or decks that strike your fancy, we'd like you to consider going over to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. If you use that affiliate link when you order your magic singles, your products, a pre-con deck, all the pre-con decks, anything at all, you really are supporting game nights and making sure that this show stays on air. We truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you that uses the affiliate link. It helps us out a lot. Another thing that could help us out is if you go to patreon.com slash command zone and sign up to become a patron, you can contribute to us directly. And patrons, well, they're not seeing this right now. They've already watched it because one of the many perks that you get for being a member is exclusive early access to, to see game nights before anybody else. Patrons really are the heart and soul of our content. We can't thank you enough. And finally, make sure you stick around to the very end of the episode because, as always, we've got a ton of free stuff to give away. You don't want to miss it. Okay, let's see what these Commander 2018 decks can do. How's it, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Game Nights. Today, we have a brand new guest who's never been on the show before, but is a big fan. Hello, my name is Kyle Hill. I talk about science on TV and the internet, and I host the YouTube science show, Because Science. And this is my first time on Game Nights. And we've got some returning guests. Hi, I'm Cassius Mars of the San Francisco 49ers. Hey guys, it's Mel. We're here today to play Commander 2018. We are playing with the brand new pre-con decks straight out of the box. We've got some brand new planeswalkers, and they can be your commanders. We're pretty excited. And I am playing Estrid the Mast. So the goal is to play a lot of creatures that basically give you benefits for playing enchantments, enchantments that give you benefits for playing enchantments, to so just get all kinds of value from enchantments. It's a, it's a fun deck. I will be playing Lord Windgrace as my commander. What this deck seems to want to do is get a lot of lands into play and interact with lands in the graveyard quite a bit. So my game plan is to get my commander out and then start that value train a rolling or a turning or however trains move. So the deck I'm gonna be playing today is Sahili the Gifted. So Sahili's a really exciting commander because her first ability is going to let you make a really large board of artifacts. And her second ability is going to allow you to cast some really huge spells. And what's more commander than that? So the deck I'm gonna be playing today is Aminatu the Fate Shifter. So this is a really interesting card and it's hard to determine what the deck wants to do just by looking at the text. There's some top deck manipulation probably gonna blink some creatures. And that ultimate is really, really perplexing. I'm gonna be excited to see how to take advantage of it. All right, let's play. Let's battle. Let's do it. Welcome everyone. It's a little strange, I gotta admit, to not have Jimmy here, so thank you for filling in. As usual, we have the Commander 2018 themed play match from Ultra Pro. Ooh. Nice. I see. And Kyle, this is yes. your first time ever on the show. Very excited, long time listener, long time viewer, so this is perfect, I'm amped. Well, it's good to have a fan on the show and we're a yeah. fan of yours as well, but it means you need to be knighted. Kyle Hill, I dub thee. Uh. Game night. Yes, yes, I am ready. Arise, Sir Kyle. <laughs> Welcome to game nights. Only one may stand. All right, everyone ready? Let's do mm -hmm. it. All right, I am gonna draw, and I'm going to play Kazandu Refuge, and when it enters the battlefield, I gain one life, and I'll pass my turn. Cool. 
draw, play Seaside Citadel tapped, and pass my turn. I love saying that card three times fast. Seaside Citadel, Seaside Citadel, Seaside Citadel. <laughs> I'll play an island, and then tap to play a soul. I, mean, I know, I know, I She's know. She's ramping. I know, She's guys, ramping. I know. It's over. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about getting this soul ring turn one. It is a pre-con, though, so I don't have a huge follow-up, but it's a really nice foundation for all these other sweet cards in my hand. In an artifact deck, especially with her commander, it can mean a world of trouble coming at you really fast, so it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Relax, there's no signet, there's but... There's something. Don't say but, just say pass the turn. That's true. All right, I'm just gonna pass the turn. Oh, okay, I thought you were literally gonna play something else. Uh, I'll draw, and I will play a Demir Guildgate tapped. Pass turn. Okay, I'm going to play Grim Backwoods as my land for the turn, then I'm gonna tap two mana, one colorless and one green for Kalani Heart Expedition. So being able to get those lands into play later and accelerate is exactly what you want to do. So I'm happy with this play. Maybe try to get back on pace with Mel. I will pass my turn after that. Awesome. Untap. Draw. So at this point, everybody's ramping a little bit. Turn two, but I've got a ton of ramp in my hand. I've got a bunch of tap lands and stuff, so I have to do it the right way to make sure that I get the most out of my play. So pass. Good fair magic. <laughs> Not you, him. <laughs> soul ring. Man, that soul ring really threw you up. Oh, well, she's gonna turn two, so oh, you leave the gifted. I don't know what you're talking Her, about. That's yep, pretty good. She is, it's happening. Oh no. Bomb. Come on, you gotta have a better four drop. Bomb. It's an unwinding clock. That's uh, really good. <laughs> Not bad. So one of the things I'm hoping for is to get this mana engine started, and Unwinding Clock is awesome for uh, just getting extra mana out of all the mana rocks that I've got in my deck. And also, as soon as I get some creatures out, it's gonna be kind of like a pseudo-vigilant, so I can attack and then get them untapped afterwards. Pass my turn. Okay, I will untap. And I too will untap. Yeah, I'll play a island, and I will tap two for an Orjov Signet. Just like everybody else and every commander deck ever, I want to do the same thing, which is just ramp. Just get to my more powerful things or be able to play multiple spells in a turn. And the way to do that is have more mana. So it's good to have a turn two play like this. And then I'm not as cool as Mel, so go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'll draw Z. I will play Akum Refuge. Enters the battlefield, I'll gain one life. And uh, playing that refuge triggers Kalani Heart Expedition. One quest counter. Jeez, that card's good. With that, pass my turn. Draw stuff. I'm gonna tap two and play Fertile Grounds. Targeting Seaside Citadel. Nice. My commander's got a great way to take advantage of enchantment land acceleration by untapping all of my permanents. So it kind of gives me almost like a seaborne muse effect. So then I'll play a Selesnia Sanctuary and I will bounce a planes back to my hand. Pass turn. Cool. Untap, draw for turn. All right, I'm gonna play an island. I will tap four to play Zahili, the gifted. Brand shiny new commander. And then I will plus one her to create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo token. All right, first one with the Planeswalker out on the field. And I think this is really nice too for Sahili because she's got a lot of like, get your artifact board together kind of synergy. So having her out on the board and having her help me get even more artifacts is awesome. She's kind of snowballing in. There's not really any way right now on the table. Nobody's got creatures to put any pressure on that Planeswalker. So she's going to be in command of the board for a little bit here. I just hope we can kind of get control of Sahili before that ultimate comes out because that is scary. And then end my turn. Okay, I will untap. Yes, excellent. Okay, I'm gonna play a new Benalia. That's gonna scry. I will keep that on top. And then I'm gonna tap a white, a black, and a blue and play Aminatu, the Fate Shifter. And then I'm gonna plus her. So I'll draw a card and then put a card for my hand on top of my library. So here she is, the scary little girl, Aminatu. That first ability on her, it feels like you're drawing a card, but you actually don't gain card advantage because you have to put another card from your hand back on top of the library. So in the end, you still have the same amount of cards in your hand that you did before. And you might be thinking like, what's the use of that? And for now, I'll just say, wait until next turn. And then I will pass the turn. Uh, untap, draw. I'm going to play an Evolving Wilds. And then that will raise the quest counters on Kalani Heart Expedition up one. Nice. Usually Evolving Wilds is just great for mana fixing, but in my case with Colony Heart Expedition out, I get to put two additional lands into play. So right now, even though I don't have any permanents on the battlefield aside from lands, I'm feeling like I'm gonna start doing stuff real quick. Pass the turn. All right, on top, I draw. I'm gonna tap for four and play Dawn's Reflection. 
turn my island. So this card sets me up really nicely. It gives me two extra mana for my land, and it also sets me up along with my other enchantment with my commander. Because I'll be able to untap those two lands, it'll be almost as if the Planeswalker was free. And then I'll cast Crewfix's Insight. So I'll reveal the top six. And then what happens? You I get, get to, to take choose. three enchantments. Well, how many enchantments in are in there? There are three. Oh. Convenient. I will draw three cards. Man, this is quite the turn for Cassius. So not only does he have a lot of really sweet fixing on all his lands, he's also got to draw three cards for three mana. I mean, that ain't bad. I'm feeling good about where I'm at right now. Next turn, I should be able to start getting going and putting some enchantment down. The value. That was a three mana draw three? The value. The value. Jeez. Untap, draw for turn. I will play a Seat of the Synod, which is an artifact land. Oh, sweet. So this is really cool because not only is it a land, but it also amps up Sahili's ability to make all my cards cheaper because it counts as an artifact. So you have four artifacts right now if you were to One, use Sahili? One, two, three, four, correct. <laughs> so four mana. Four free mana with mm -hmm. Sahili. That is with insane. Which four free mana. Four, so ten. She can play a ten mana spell. Oh, uh, no. All right, so I'm just going to plus one her and make another servo token. And then I will tap for three to make a Chief of the Foundry. Two two servos now? Yes, so these are now two two servos. I'm not good at math, but I think two is more than one. That's uh, that's not great, especially since she can start attacking my Planeswalker and she just has a bunch of servos, it's gonna be hard for me to block all that stuff. Chief of the Foundry is, is really good in that deck and not something I wanna see. And then I'll attack you, Kyle, with oh. this fearsome servo. But I'm the new one. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. No blockers, so I'll go down two. Put me back down to 40. Ah, uh, okay. Servo to the face, back down to 40. Still nothing to deal with all the board presence that all the other players have. Feel like I'm gonna take some damage. And I shall generously pass my turn. All right, I will untap. And I too will untap, realizing that I should have tapped Seat of the Synod instead of that island, but that's fine, go ahead. <laughs> If you're one mana short, it's gonna be a huge punt. So remember how I had put a card from my hand back on top of my library last turn? I'm about to draw that card, and it is... Oh my gosh, it's a miracle card. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, all right, all right. I'm starting to see how this first ability comes into play. Miracles, huh? That, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. So I'll pay two white and two and make two angels. Oh, man. It's not bad. So eight power in the air. Flyers are really good at attacking Planeswalkers. So these are even better than they would be in a normal game of Commander because everyone has a Planeswalker as Commander. So the ability to fly in and just take those things out whenever I want, I'm feeling like I'm in a really good position. I think we're in trouble. At least he's tapped out. So I'm actually going to minus Aminatu three, target my Orzhov Signet. So it's gonna become exiled and then return to the battlefield, untapped and then I will make two mana and play an Azorius Signet. Oh, dang. I'm not super happy about the angels. They're definitely gonna slow me down a little bit. I don't wanna play my Planeswalker, which comes into the battlefield, even if I plus it up two. It'd only go to seven, and then Josh would just be able to kill it next go around on the spot. So now there's a lot of calculating that I have to do just to establish my own board because everyone's already has so much going on. So uh, before the end of your turn, I will sacrifice Evolving Wild putting a swamp into play. But since that's also gonna trigger the heart expedition, I'll go search for those other lands while I'm at it. If that's okay with the table? Yep. So you get three lands? Oh yeah. Oof. And then I will untap, draw. Those flyers on the board look bad for planeswalkers to me. Sahili's at what, six already. What's she ultimate at? Seven. I, yeah, I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. Oh, like, Lord. I gotta, if you let the angels live, I will try and at least I don't knock know. I got, a, I got a pretty bad play here for you. I'm saying I'm gonna help us take care of Sahili, who's almost ultimate. Just do your bad play is, on your next turn. Very... I think I also might be able to deal with all oh. that nonsense. So. What? Oh, wow. Well, big talk. I'm just, well, I'm play just saying. Turn. I'm just saying. Yeah. Right. Some kind Go of board ahead, Okay, so there's been some big words flying around in this last round. Uh, people have been talking about board wipes. That sounds pretty scary. People are plotting against me. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I know there's some some bad vibes going around on that side of the table. Okay, so now I sort of know why Kyle hasn't put anything out on the board. It seems like he's got some kind of wrath here. I'm hoping with politics, I can at least get to use my angels a couple of times before he wraths all the creatures off the board. Okay, I will play Channel Horde Worm. 
In a game like this that's necessarily going to have four planeswalkers out a lot, you start thinking about what cards can deal damage to specific targets, planeswalkers. It's kind of a different calculus than I'm used to. Okay, this is good. So Kyle is receptive. I'm able to at least stop him from using the board wipe for now. So that's good. I'm going to be able to use my angels a little bit and maybe maybe I can even find an answer to his board wipe. With that, then I will pass the turn. All right, untap. I'll draw and then I'll cast Estrid the Mast. It's not a great board state for a Planeswalker, but luckily with the ability, I'm able to untap and get some more mana. I'm going to float two white mana and the blue and plus two Estrid. And then I will untap my Enchanted Permanence. So you got three mana floating. I have three mana floating. Nice. I will use that mana plus two more to play Sigil, the Empty Throne. Ooh, okay. So now Cash is going to get a 4-4 Flying Angel for every time he plays an enchantment. Well, that's probably not a problem unless his deck had, you know, 30 enchantments in it. I will tap for three and I will play Ever Watching Threshold. So that's gonna trigger Sigil and I'll get a angel. Nice. I'm feeling great at this point. I've got my mana base is going. I've got my commander out. I've got some creatures to protect my planeswalker. I feel good about where I'm at. All right, I will pass my turn. All right, untap, draw for turn. I'm going to play a Foundry of the Councils. So I know because Josh has pretty much told me that he's gonna come after my Sahili with his angels. This is some bad news. So I can make two little flying fopters that can chump block those big ol' angels and make sure that Sahili won't die for now. Interesting situation. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six artifacts. I'm going to plus one Sahili. So your next spell costs six less? My next spell costs six less. Also, you can ultimate next turn. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's oh, seven. Oh, what? Wow, are we there already? <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, so here's where Sahili's starting to shine. All right, so then I'm going to cast for freezies, Duplicant. Oh, oh no. no. Oh man, who? a nice Crazy non token target. creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna target your channel board worm. So my duplicate is now a 6-6. Six, six. Duplicate's a pretty cool card because it can take stuff out, but the one thing that I wish it would do is just retain some of the abilities of the card. When the duplicate gets the power and toughness, it doesn't also get the trample, so it's like my opponents had a 6-6 six, six with trample, and now my opponents just have a 6-6, six, six, which is way better. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I, I love the space here. He I'm had so one excited. thing. I, re I really like the art, so this is fine. Mel, come on. I only had one thing, and you took it away from me. Now I'm gonna take everything away from you. He's 100% okay. wiping the board now, by the way. And then Kyle, I'm going to come at you for six. All right, well, as you can see, I am tapped out with nothing on the board, so I will be taking six. To the face. And I will pass my turn. Okay, I will untap. Oh, you're untapping. Yes, I, I am untapping. I love to untap too. All right, I will drop. So Kyle and I made a deal, so I'm gonna live up to my side of the bargain, even though I know Mel's just gonna chump block with the two thopters off that foundry of the consoles, but you know, it's important to uphold your end of the deals that you make, so here we go. Well, I made a deal with Kyle, so I am going to attack Sahili with two 4-4 four, four flyers. End of his word. Give me no choice. Forcing it. I'm gonna sacrifice my foundry in order to get two thop thops. And these thopters will heroically throw themselves in front of those two angels. Okay, both the thopters will die, but Sahili will take no damage. Heroic thopters. Darn those thopters. All right, Sahili, you're safe for now. And then I'm gonna play Pilgrim's Eye. And that's gonna allow me to go search for a land out of my deck, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minus Aminatu to blink the Pilgrim's Eye. So I'm just gonna go find two lands. Twice, yeah. Okay, so I will find a Plains and a Swamp. So this card allows me to get some value right away, and I don't really care if I lose it. And then I will play the, uh, the Swamp. <laughs> I'll play the Plains. <laughs> the Swamp. <laughs> I'm, sc I'm scared to play stuff. I feel like you're and, gonna do something. And perhaps you should be. Yeah. So I need to do you're something. You're gonna go, right? I, I need to do something, gonna, or else I'm going blow everything to out? lose. Are you gonna blow everything out? I'm just saying. Should I, I shouldn't play stuff, is that what you're just saying? 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> Losing the angels is gonna suck, but the board wipe, you know, if it just hits creatures, it's gonna be fine. It's not my favorite, but I'll still have an active planeswalker, so I'm just gonna pass the turn and not play anything else here, just so I don't lose it for nothing. In light of that, yeah. I will pass the turn. All right. So if you look at the board right now, it would be easy to tell who is doing the worst. I only have lands, nothing on the battlefield, but I think I have maybe the only card in this deck that can bring me back from the brink, and I have to use it right now, or else that's it. So I'll play Gaze of Granite for five. Ugh, that hurts a lot. Uh, see, most board wipes are creature based. This one hits all non land permanents. This is awful. Okay, yes, yeah, my whole board's gone. Oh, she keeps her 6 6? Mm, yeah. It's all the yes. mana I have. Most importantly, I actually lose my mana rocks, and so all of a sudden, I'm down to way less mana than I had before. I lost my soul ring, I lost an unwinding clock. One of those commander cards that everybody just loves. <laughs> it seems as if you love it. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I love it so much, it's probably one of my favorite cards. <laughs> Okay, I'm playing my commander in the command zone. <laughs> don't talk. Nothing else don't to do. Talk to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't speak to me. <laughs> and pass the turn. Untap, draw step. I've seen game nights with Cash. Um, he's he's bigger than I thought he'd be. I'll play my commander. Plus two, which does nothing. Pass the turn. Hey, buddy. How's that planeswalker? I'm sorry. I'll untap, draw. All right, Kyle. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoy this too. First. Yeah. You know place. where this is going. Yes, I do. Attack you with this 6-6 six, six duplicate. All right, I'm tapped out. I don't have any blockers, so I will take the six damage. Wow, this is fun. I will end yeah. my turn and pass to you, Josh. Okay. All right, on your end step, Mel, I'm going to play Esper Charm with the mode draw two cards. Ooh. So one... Two. When your opponent five for ones you, you gotta start getting some cards back in your hand. So, you know, I wish it was more cards, but I'll take two right now. We just gotta start rebuilding the hand and then hopefully rebuilding the board. Right. Then I will untap and I will draw. So I'm gonna tap a white and a black and I'm gonna play High Priest of Penance. Oh, I love that guy. Oh man, I love High Priest of Penance. This is just one of those really fun politicking cards where you can be like, listen, buddy, we gotta take somebody out. You're gonna block this guy, and you can be like, yeah, buddy, we're in, we're in. Then I'm gonna tap four, and I'm gonna play Conundrum Sphinx. How could you solve I all see. these riddles, Josh? I, I mean, don't know. What, <laughs> How can I figure out what's really on top of my answer. deck? This is a really interesting card with a lot of text, but basically with my commander and able to know exactly what the top card of my deck is, this is just a value engine. So the board wipe hurt, but at least I can recover the cards lost and I can get back into this game. Uh, that's all I can do. Go ahead, Kyle. Untap, drawing, and then I will play Avenger of Zendikar. Oh, no. So you get eight plants? Yes. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, that happens. Do you know what feels really good after playing a big spell that makes a big difference? Playing another big spell that makes a big difference. I get to put a lot of power onto the board and maybe stop the hate coming my way. Or maybe make it worse. The bad news for all of us is that Kyle still hasn't played his land yet this turn. Then I'll play a land for the turn. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll put plus one, plus one counters on all of these plant tokens. <laughs> So they're all one twos? Yes. Yep, that's a lot of power on the board. It's not just the fact that Avengers here and making a bunch of brand new plants. It's the fact that these plants are just gonna get bigger and bigger the more lands that he puts out on the board. And because of his commander, you know that's gonna happen. It's it's commander, you know, that's just how it is. Like the game is constantly flipping. Somebody's salty, somebody's happy. I can get back at Mel now for taking my life down. Deal. Without anyone else's okay. life being taken down. Yeah, this all is right, good. all right, I see how this is. I haven't been able to do this up until this point, but I think next turn is going to be awesome for me. Unto. Draw. I'll play Winds of Wrath. Nice. I'm okay with this. Turnabout's fair play. <sighs> that is not awesome for me. Yes! Yes! I'll tap for one white, play Soul Snare, and then I'm going to plus Estridge. She will go to seven. And that brings her up to ultimate. What's what's the ultimate? I can't help but notice we have no creatures. So it's looking good for me. I've got my Planeswalkers at seven, which is its ult number, and I clear the board of all creatures, so I'm hoping that I can ult and kind of get back what I lost earlier in the game. Cash just has a lot of enchantments in his graveyard, and the moment he gets to ult his Planeswalker, this is gonna be pretty nuts. I'm looking at my hand. I don't have much to do about it. 
Uh, guys? That's my turn. All That's right. my turn. I got nothing to untap because of last turn. I'm sorry! But you'll suffer for this. <laughs> I don't know why he's mad. Look at his position. Because, bro, it helps so, much, so much mana. Look at my mana. He just, yeah, just got that back for free. All right, I'm going to tap all six of my mana. That's bad. Well, just to grab my commander back into play. Commander. And my commander will plus one itself to put out a servo. OK, so we're just going to take some time to breathe, rebuild, and hope that somebody has something to deal with Asteroid. I'll end my turn, I'll pass to Josh. Okay, I'll untap, I'll draw. I'm gonna play Aminatu. And then I am going to plus her. She'll go to four, and I will draw a card, and then put a card from my hand on top of my library. And again, I'm just trying to get some kind of value train running so that I can get enough card advantage to get back in this game. And then I will play a Tranquil Cove and gain a life, and pass the turn. So no one else has done anything about Estrid yet. We're getting closer to Cassius's turn. It's looking great for me and my Planeswalker's about to ult. I gotta make it through Kyle's turn. As long as he doesn't have anything hasty, I'm good. Untap, drawing. Okay, so they didn't deal with the Planeswalker. Uh, I will play Seer Sundial. No, this card does not. I mean, it's gonna draw him some cards eventually. Who cares? It doesn't deal with the Planeswalker. We gotta stop Cassius' Planeswalker. Come on, Kyle. I have a way to deal with his Planeswalker. <sighs> Listen, if you have an answer for a Planeswalker that's about to ultimate, then you're allowed to do it. Which means I have to do this. I'm playing Ruinous Path, targeting Estrid. Show me how you feel. <laughs> I didn't cast the Ruinous Path, man, that was Kyle. You told him to do it, you encouraged it. <laughs> well, yeah. You encourage it every time. Of course. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Uh, so with that, pass it to you, buddy. It is like the best political feeling because you're like, yeah, that guy was a jerk, huh? Like a really big jerk, wasn't he? That's true. I, I'm really sorry about that, man, you know. I'll cast Elderwood Scion. Okay, so cash is a little salty, but actually this card is kind of sneaky good. It has lifelink and it's gonna be cheaper to enchant and there's so many enchantments in Cash's deck. I would keep an eye on this card. It can really do some work in this game. All right, I'm gonna untap, draw. I'll play Varchild, Betrayer of Kjeldor. So I love cards like this that let you politic with people and also that let you sort of secretly pull the strings from behind the scenes. And then I'm gonna plus the Healy and put out a servo. And then uh, with my other servo, I'm gonna come swing at the guy who has no blockers. Makes sense, I have no blockers. I'll go down one. 27. And I will pass my turn. All right, I will untap. I will draw my card for turn, which is another miracle card. I guess I am going to cast Devastation Tide for its miracle cost. While all these board wipes are annoying, given how much my deck is putting lands into play and accelerating, Devastation Tide right now isn't devastating to me. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> yes! <laughs> then I'm gonna play Mortuary Mire, which is gonna put a creature card from my graveyard on top of my library. I'm gonna put Conundrum Sphinx. Hmm. Then I'm gonna play Aminatu, and I'm gonna plus her. I'm gonna draw a card and put a card from my hand on top of my library, and I'll pass turn. Okay, untap, and draw for the turn. All right, with the board cleared, I don't think there's any more board wipes coming. Now is the time to play my commander, and I will cast Lord Windgrace. Row, row. I'm excited. Playing a Planeswalker into an empty board with no creatures out, I think I can start getting a real land draw engine going. Then I will cast Cultivate. Smart, you'll have a land in your hand then. I wonder what you could do with it. Oh man. So I will put a Swamp onto the battlefield tapped, a Forest into my hand, and then I will plus two Lord Wind Grace, discard a card, a Forest, and then I'll draw two. As any seasoned commander player knows, card advantage is huge, especially when you get towards the mid to later game. I'm looking at Lord Windgrace, and I'm not very happy about it. I'll pass the turn. Untap. Draw. Yeah, I feel a little discouraged. I feel like I'm a little too far behind. I've missed some land drops. I don't have really any mana acceleration. Time for seven, pay my commander. And then play Soul Snare. And then I'm going to plus Estrid and pass turn. Untap. Draw for turn. Um, I will play Sahili, and then I will grab myself a servo, and I'll recast my friend Varchild. 
here's all the stuff you saw before. It never really feels good to be replaying cards that you've already played, but sometimes you just gotta do it and pass my turn. So it's coming back to my turn. Cash and Mel really just replayed stuff that they already played and they're in the same position I'm in, which is they don't have a value engine going and it just feels like Kyle is gonna slowly pull ahead in this game and there's no way to get at his commander right now. So value engine is really my number one priority here. I need to start drawing some cards. Well, I guess the responsible thing to do is to plus Aminatu draw a card and then put a card from my hand on top of my library. Then I will pay five for Mole Drifter. Nice. So I will draw two cards. So this card is always awesome, but in this situation, combined with Aminatu's minus ability, I now have an engine set up where I can draw cards every single turn. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. And then I'm gonna play Conundrum Sphinx again. So at the end of this turn, I'm feeling pretty good. I got an engine set up. I have the ability to affect the other planeswalkers with my flyers. I just need no more board wipes to happen. We've had enough board wipes. Let's just, let's let some stuff stick on the table. And then I think I'll be feeling even better next turn. And pass the turn. Okay. Untapping, drawing a card for the turn. And then go up on Lord Windgrace to nine. Discard a card, which will be a land card. And then I'll draw two. So good. Then I will play Flame Blast Dragon. Wow. It is a fireball on a stick. It can deal X to any target, even Planeswalkers. And knowing how important Planeswalkers are to all of these decks, this is gonna be my form of control in these colors. And then I will pass the turn. You can go, okay. Right. Hey, so we're good now, right, yeah? No. <laughs> oh, I thought enough time had passed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like Kyle is having a rough time of it here politically on his very first episode. I guess we're going to have to wait and see if uh, he can get back into Cash's good graces. Now, if you want to get into our good graces, it's a lot more simple. All you got to do is go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. They've got the Commander 2018 product for sale right now. You can get the pre-cons. You can just order singles. We say this all the time. You're going to buy magic cards anyway. If you just use the affiliate link when you do, you really are supporting game nights and making sure that the show continues to happen. And that's just good value. And something else that's good value is products from Ultra Pro. We've talked many times about their gravity dice, their eclipse sleeves, the best sleeves on the market right now. But I wanted to point out something that the observant among you may have noticed is that black lotus wall scroll that's in the background of this very episode. This is something new that Ultra Pro has been doing. They've got a number of different designs. I've seen Jace the Mind Sculptor, History of Banalia. There was a Nicol Bolas one. These are cloth banners that you can hang and spice up your room, your game room, your game nights studio set. Ultra Pro products can be found at your LGS or online retailers like Card Kingdom. And again, by supporting our sponsors, you really are supporting us and the content you enjoy. Okay, let's get back to the game and we'll see if uh, Cassius and Kyle can mend some fences. Although from my perspective, I'd rather they didn't. All right, uh, I'm just gonna tap for a blue, green, and two more mana, and I will play Eric Smithis. That thing is so cool. I think this card is solid. I'm, I'm a fan. So early on in the game, when you need the mana, it's great. And then later on in the game, if you want it to be a creature, it's a 12-12, and it also can still tap for mana. And I'll play Elderwood Scion. So that'll take a slumber counter off of Erex Smithis. And then I will plus Esther the Mast. I don't have anything to untap with it. Uh, it's just gonna push the loyalty to seven. So I'm at the point here where I've got a decent board state. If I can avoid somebody coming and messing it up for a turn, then I can possibly get back in the game. Pass turn. We'll untap, draw. All right, I'm going to... Oh, oh, here's what you do. Attack me with Varchild, I'll let it through. And then with the survivors, I'll swing at Lord Windgrace. Yeah, let's yep. do it. Yeah. So this is one of the reasons that I like cards like this so much. You can really strike a deal with your neighbor. All right, mm -hmm. coming at you. I will not block, so I'll take three, and I get three survivors. All right. So this is great. I get a bunch of free attackers that I can send in and just keep Lord Windgrace under control. And I will play a Mind Stone. And then I'm going to plus one Sahili. So one, two, and three artifacts is going to discount from my seven mana Mirror Battle Sphere. So that's gonna make four Mirror Tokens. All right, here's what I've been waiting for. So when it attacks, it can also do some direct damage to stuff, which means that I can start threatening other people's planeswalkers too. And then, sack my Mind Stone to draw a card. Seems like a lot happened over there. <laughs> yeah. 
It's a big board. Yep. And I will pass my turn. Okay. I will untap. Draw for turn. Okay. Then I'm gonna minus Aminatu. She'll go to four, and I will blink the Muldrifter and draw two cards when it enters the battlefield again. Ah, is there any better feeling in the world than blinking your own Muldrifter? No. The answer is no. There's no better feeling. It's the best. Then I'm going to go to combat. We're gonna swing three survivors at Lord Windgrace and one flying 4-4 at Estrid. So trigger the Conundrum Sphinx and we all name a card. I will name Swamp. I'll say Forest. Forest. Mountain. All right, let's flip. Now that's a weird effect. That is a weird effect. It's a conundrum. Okay, so now you've got three survivors coming at Lord Windgrace, Kyle. Okay, I will block one of the survivors, bam, with something that a survivor cannot handle. Survive this. Survive this. The survivor is not going to survive. And then I'll let the other two through. So Lord Windgrace will take two. Going down to seven. And then Ezra will take the four damage. Planeswalker management. Seriously. Feels like constantly in this game, we've been going, uh-oh, that planeswalker's about to ultimate. We gotta do something about it. Uh-oh, that other planeswalker is about to ultimate. We gotta do something about it, but they can't ultimate. Otherwise, we're just gonna lose. All right, uh, then I'm gonna play Dusk Mantle Seer, and then I'll tap five, and I'll play Gin of Wishes. Hmm, that's all bad. Big flyers are always scary, especially if you're playing with planeswalkers. And what's even scarier to me right now on Josh's board is the Jinn of Wishes, knowing that Aminatu can put a card from his hand on top of his library, and then Jinn can cheat that out for four instead of eight or whatever he may have in his hand. That definitely scares me. And then I will pass the turn. All right, untap, draw for turn. So I'm going to plus two Lord Wind Grace. And uh, I'm going to discard a mountain and draw two. How many cards do you have now? Seven. Jeez. Um, I will play Fantis the War Weaver. Wow, this card's going to be pretty annoying because the fact that everybody has to attack with everything every turn. It's going to keep people from kind of protecting their own planeswalker, so it'll make the game a little bit more interesting. And then I am going to cast Stitch Together. I have well okay. over seven cards. Yes. So I'm going to return Avenger of Send a card to the battlefield. Oh, crap. How many lands do you have right now? 11. <sighs> I thought that problem was dealt with. Here we go. Even more plant tokens than last time. And then on top of all of that, I'm going to play a mountain for the turn. Putting a plus one, plus one counter on all my plant tokens. Oh my lord. Avenger of Zendikar in the Lord Windgrace deck is just a crazy combination put together. Those guys are so freaking strong. Oh, I still have to go to combat. Oh, true, and you have so to attack I now. have to attack with Flame Blast Dragon. I'm going to attack Mel. And then uh, for the Flame Blast Dragon trigger, I'm going to tap three and hit Muldrifter for two. No. I have no flyers. I'm going to take five damage. Um, and then... I will pass the turn. Right now, I have a lot more defenses than everyone else, and my spider will grow if they attack me. So I'm going to let all the damage be done. Sit back, spin my whip. So I'll tap for three. So I'll play Octopus Umbra, targeting Elderwood Siren. Nice. So it's great. I'm going to be able to swing, get some life out of it, deal some damage. Then I'll play Reclamation Sage, targeting Mirror Battlesphere. So Kyle's creatures got everybody swinging and I just need blockers to protect my planeswalker. Whoa, man, whoa! That was pretty messed up. I like didn't even do anything to you. This innocent sphere of mirrors just got caught in the crossfire. It's the, How's that innocent? It's the mirror hugging sphere, Josh. Like, like they're all just in one big hug. It's a mirror hugging <laughs> So I cast two spells, so I take two slumber counters off the aisle. So two more and it's just an act of 12-12. Yeah. Good to know. And tough for three, I wanna play Ravenous Slime. This card kind of scares me because I just got one of the best cards in my deck out of my graveyard. I know there's other reanimation cards in my deck and I don't want that kind of stuff to stop. Uh, Mel, I'm sorry. It's fine. I gotta, I gotta uh, turn sideways at you. That will trigger the Umbra and I will tap Fantas. <laughs> So I tap down Kyle's creatures, and I'm hoping that this opens it up for Josh to swing in and keep his Planeswalker from ultimate. No blocks from me, I'm going down eight. And then I'll gain eight life. Between the dragon and the elemental, this has been a pretty rough turn for me, and suddenly my life total has just tanked. 
And then I'll plus Astrid and untap Elder Wood Sion. That Octopus Umbra, it's doing a lot more work than, than I would think. And pass turn. All right, untap, draw. I'll play a uh, Prismatic Lens. So, giant fire spider, I don't like that guy. I do not want to have to attack with everybody, but here goes. I'm gonna go to combat, and because of Thantis, I need to attack with everything, so it's going to be... I think I'm just gonna have to come at you with all my guys, Cassius. So you're at 48. I will block one of them with my Elderwood and gain eight, and then lose seven, so I'll gain a life. And when the servo dies, Ravenous Live triggers. And he gets a plus one, plus one counter. And then because of Varchild, Cash is gonna get three survivor tokens. So despite all this stuff that's going on, fire spiders, planeswalkers, my biggest problem is that Sahili doesn't have a lot of card draw built into her. And then I'm just running out of the cards. I'm just gonna play an Is It Signet? And then plus one Sahili to make a servo token. And then it's all you, man. All right. Responsibility. <laughs> Okay, it's getting closer. All I have to do is survive Josh's turn, and then I can turn on the pain. The thing that sucks here is it's coming to my turn, and nobody has dealt with anything on Kyle's board. I'm gonna have to get really lucky with my card draw because we really need a board wipe, and I don't have one in hand right now. So, Dusk Mantle Seer will trigger, so we all flip the top card. So oh, I right. take three. I'll take, I'll take five. five. And you take two. So an interesting thing about the wording on Dusk Mantle Seer is that it doesn't say draw the card, it says put it into your hand. So that doesn't count as drawing it, which means I can't miracle off of it, which is annoying because I drew a miracle card or I put a miracle card into my hand. That is very much sadness, can't miracle off that. Then I will draw for turn. Well, now I'm glad that the Dusk Mantle Seer is worded the way that it is because... Okay, so my card off the top is... No! No. Yes! Why? We found an answer to all those plant tokens. So I am going to cast Terminus. I thought that if it was able to get back to me, I probably had this game in the bag or I was getting very close to it. I'm gonna plus Aminatu and I'm gonna draw one and put a card back on top of its owner's library. Give you a guess over what that card is gonna be. Then I will play Sarah Avatar. Uh -oh. It's a 35-35. Oh boy. It's a big creature, absolutely. You've got to account for it, but it's just big. There's a million cards to get rid of it. You can block it with anything. I'm not too stressed. And then I assume my 35-35 will last until my next turn, so go ahead, Kyle. <laughs> Such is the game of Commander. <laughs> All right, uh, untap, draw. Seeing how quickly my deck can bounce back from board wipes, I am positive Sarah Avatar is coming at right here. So I am required to get something out to block or else I think I'm dead. I'm gonna go up to 11. I'm gonna discard a card. I don't have a land, so I'll just discard it here sometime here. Perfect. Then put Loyal Apprentice into play. Sarah Avatar doesn't have any other evasion, so playing this card right now is actually great because it gives me two blockers to chump with if I need to. This is good, stabilizing. And then I'll tap six, and I will cast Emissary of Grudges. So I love this, you get to secretly choose an opponent, but who do I choose? This is a really interesting card. It's like you immediately are trying to figure out who's the most likely player that Kyle would name. So I will now choose. I feel like since the early game, I haven't been much of a threat. I also don't have a bunch of targeting effects. I don't think it's me. I can choose anybody, anybody that would want to mess with me. I'm thinking that he's either gonna choose me or Josh because he knows that I'm just like hell-bent on killing him. I absolutely do not want him to win. But the smart pick in my head is Josh. I figured that he would go with Josh, but if he went with me, I wouldn't be surprised. All right, I'm keeping a secret and also safe. It's probably not Mel because she hasn't shown the ability to interact a lot. So I feel it's kind of 50-50 between Cassius and I, you know, which name Kyle wrote down. And then I will go to combat and then I will get a... Close Thopter. A hasty one. Everything is haste. Um, so I'll send one of the Thopters at Sahili. Okay. Got nothing in the air, no choice, but to have her take one damage. Yes. Sahili's ultimate is pretty interesting because it really wants me to have a full board before I play it because I get to double everything. I don't really have much right now though, so it's not a really big deal that they hit her for just one or two. And then that will end my turn. Okay, untap. All right, draw. 
nobody's deck is really taking off because everybody's deck depends on their commander ulting. I'm just gonna plus Astrid. So at this point, I'm just trying to get to the ultimate. I feel that's the only way to bring me back. That's my turn. Okay. Draw. Uh, I'm going to plus one. Get you a survey. I'm actually going to use her other one. Uh -oh. I'm going to get me a discount. What do you have that you need more mana than you yeah. have? <laughs> I will play Tidings. I will draw four cards for the small cost of two blue mana. That's pretty good. This is going to give me a chance to get those cards that I need to get me back into the game. Well, no more card problems. Do you have anything to do with his uh, Planeswalker that's going to ult? Yes. Oh, uh, that's good. So I'm looking over at Lord Windgrace and he's pretty close. I also have a pretty good hunch that I'm probably not the name on that Emissary of Grudges. Let's see if that's true. I'm going to cast Into the Royal. I'm going to target Lord Windgrace. And I've kicked it, so I will draw a card. It looks like Mel's getting back into the game and bouncing my Planeswalker to my hand. It's not terrible because I won't have to pay commander tax, but it's not, it's definitely not fitting with my plan. Now I am just on the defensive. Back to the hand. That's what royals sound like. Return yeah. it. Oh, and also it kind of gave the rest of the table information as to who I secretly chose. So Mel was not chosen. That's not the secret name that Kyle wrote down. So it's still either Cassius or I, and it could still go either way. It's just something I have to keep in my mind in the future. All right, I'm going to end my turn. Okay, I will untap and draw my card for turn. It is a miracle card and treat the dead. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pay black, black, and three, and I'll get Mole Drifter, Pilgrim's Eye, and High Priest of Penance out. These miracle cards, in combination with my Planeswalker, are really coming through. I wish I had more things in my graveyard, but I'm still able to get that value engine back and rolling. Mole Drifter will trigger, so I draw two, and then I will Pilgrim's Eye for land, put it into my hand, and then... I'm gonna go to combat. I'm gonna swing with Sarah Avatar at Kyle for 35. <laughs> well, I guess I will declare Loyal Apprentice a blocker. All right, no effects. Okay. That Loyal Apprentice took 35 damage. So I have to chump block, but I saw this coming. Hopefully I can get more creatures out so I don't have to keep doing this. Okay, then I'm gonna minus Aminatsu. She'll go to four and I will blink the Muldrifter and draw two cards when it enters the battlefield again. Value. Value city. And then I'm gonna pay two, I'll play a Mind Stone. I don't think I've ever been ahead in this game, but it feels like I'm, I'm crawling my way towards there now. And finally, I'm just gonna play Treasure Hunt. All right, so there's a land. I get Conundrum Sphinx, our old friend. Again! And then I will tap four, and I will play the Conundrum Sphinx. Jeez. So this was a really good turn for me. Get a bunch of creatures on the board, get that value engine rolling again, draw a couple of additional spells, get some things in the air. I feel like I'm set up. Maybe we have a chance here. Maybe I can get back into this game. Go ahead. Well, wow, that was a lot of stuff. All right, untapping, drawing a card for the turn. Right now on this turn, I'm feeling very uncomfortable. I'm okay, but if anything major shakes up my board, probably not gonna make it. And then I'm playing Lord Windgrace again. Big surprise. Catman. I will go up to seven on Lord Windgrace, and discard a card, and then yeah. draw a card, but it's a land, so I'm gonna draw two cards instead. So Tidings was nice, but that was a one-time thing. I'm looking over and I'm seeing Josh's Muldrifter engine and Kyle's Lord Windgrace engine, and those are looking really strong because they're consistent. They're every turn. I gotta find a way to do that for me. Otherwise, I'm just gonna fall behind because I just don't have enough cards. I'm gonna tap four, and then I'll play Blood Tracker. This turn feels like crunch time to me. It feels like if I make any play that is incorrect, I will die to Sarah Avatar. So although Cash has ultimate on board and we want to manage that, I just can't afford to do so. Okay, and then I will pass the turn. So I'm on tapping here. I've got seven, I've got enough to ult. But with this deck, there's a ton of value with the enchantment. So I'm gonna play a couple things before I ult. I'll play a Johnny's Chosen. That'll trigger the owl, and I'll remove the last counter. So the 12-12 is active. Yeah. And then I will play Herald of Pantheon. <sighs> so now every time an enchantment comes onto the battlefield, he's gonna get a cat, he's gonna gain life. This is it. This turn right now could be game winning. If he gets that ult off, ugh, maybe I should have dealt with the Planeswalker. This is, this is really bad. This is really bad. Mel? It's time. 
Uh, I'm gonna tap three and play a Chaos Warp, targeting Estrid. Yes, Mel, I didn't have to be the one to draw his large ire. Chaos Warp, I'm like... Okay, so Estrid's going to go back to the command zone and then he flips the top card. It is a sorcery, so that just stays on top. Whew. Thank you, Mel. Sorry that he's gonna attack you with a 12-12 now. I'm going to swing at Mel for 12. Definitely no blocks here. That's taking one for the team. Ooh. I'm not gonna say I didn't expect that or deserve it, but that was a lot of damage to my face. Oh, she was definitely owed this 12 damage. All right, uh, untap, draw. Okay, so that was a lot of damage, but at least it doesn't fly. We can get some defenses online, and Sahili is at her ultimate point, and I've got a plan to make that count. Okay, I'm gonna play a buried rune, and then pay two, mm -hmm. sacrifice it, take back Mirror Battle Sphere from the graveyard. Oh, that's a lot of Mirror. And then I'm going to cast the Mirror Battle Sphere. So it's first gonna come into play, make a bunch of mirrors, and then with the ultimate, it's going to make even more mirrors, and all these things are gonna have haste. So I can go in, swing with a giant sphere, and also get it to do direct damage to something else. This is gonna be awesome. So it looks like I have to deal with Mirror Paddle Sphere right now, because considering my life total, I cannot deal with two of those, especially if one has haste. Yeah, so in response, I'm going to cast Consigned to Dust. So I will do one and target Mirror Battle Sphere. Oh, are, are you serious? Oh, this is, that's brutal. Okay, so the Mirror Battle Sphere dies, but I'm still gonna get these four Mirror Tokens. Not nearly as useful as I was hoping. So I kind of really wanted to be the first person to ultimate my Planeswalker, but it's really not that good of an option right now. I'm just gonna make a bunch of tiny mirror tokens that just go away at the end of the turn. Not really helping me that much. Uh, I'm going to plus one Sahili to basically just get uh, seven colorless mana, and then I'll play Hedron Archive. It's rare to see a uh, Planeswalker have an ult available and not get used. It just tells you how situational Sahili's ultimate is. Ah, it feels bad for Mel here. And then I'll tap this guy to play Treasure Napper. Treasure Napper is not that great of a play, but it can try to make sure that Cassius doesn't knock me out next turn. And pass my turn. Okay, I will untap. Drop. So one of the fun things about High Priest of Penance is that it's a really fun political card. You know what you could do is run that priest at me and I'll kill him for you and you can target something. Oh, that's smart. I like your thinking. So this is gonna be great. I'm gonna swing in and just throw the High Priest of Penance at Mel and off that trigger, I'm gonna be able to get rid of Lord Windgrace. Let's go to combat. So cash is six in the air. Kyle, a 35-35, <laughs> Mel, a 1-1 one, one High Priest of Penance. So trigger the Conundrum Sphinx, and we all name a card. I will name Island. Forest. Island. Phyrexian Rebirth. Right, because you know your card. Yeah. Okay, um, so we flip. Not a forest. Sick. So he gets Rebirth. Uh, okay, so that's, the attacks are still going on here. Um, I will block the 35. I'll block this Priest uh, with my Goblin. Okay. I'm gonna uh, sacrifice Soul Snare and exile. Get that Wall Drifter out of here. Drifter. Wall Drifter gets exiled. Yeah. So we'll go to damage. Cash, you take four. Uh, Thopter dies. Yes. And then the High Priest of Penance dies, but it takes damage. So that's a trigger. And with that trigger, I will destroy Lord Windgrace. <laughs> This exchange is really good for Josh. He would be able to take out my Lord Windgrace with that effect. I say would. Uh, in response. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, crap. So now is the time for the big reveal. Oh, no. And so oh, I reveal man. the grudge. <laughs> uh, I said not to forget about the name thing. He chose me. I will redirect the ability of the priest to, I guess I'll target the Sarah avatar. Not good. Oh, this worked out very bad for me. What, I had a huge board. 
All I did was attack. I thought it was a pretty cool play, personally. All right, I'm gonna plus Amanatsu, and I'm gonna draw a card, and then put a card from my hand back on top of the library. Uh, that just couldn't have gone worse. So I was feeling like I was getting back into this, and now at the end of this turn, that was just a bad turn of events. Uh, that was probably a bad attack, and now I'm really on the back foot, and I don't think I'm in a very good position anymore. That was that was a big swing. Go ahead, Kyle. All right. Uh, untap, draw. I'll go up to nine on Lord Windgrace. Discard Mountain Valley and draw two because I'm discarding a land. Jeez. And then I will um, grapple with the past. Okay, right, right. Put the top three cards of my library into my graveyard, then I can return a creature or land card from the graveyard to my hand. I have one creature in my graveyard. Oh. You only have one? Yeah. So I'll return Loyal Apprentice to my hand. Okay. Then I will cast my Loyal Apprentice again. Then I'm going to go to combat. Combat trigger. Put a 1-1 one, one Thopter into play with Flying and Haste and uh, Emissary of Grudges at Sahili. Oh, Flying. And Cash, I'll turn Blood Tracker at you for two. I will take the two. I can't block, so Sahili is gonna go down six. And then uh, the last thing I will do, I will cast Worm Harvest. How many lands do you have in there? So I have eight lands in my graveyard and that's gonna make eight worms. <laughs> So this card is just ridiculous. He can replay it as long as he's got a land in hand and lands are not a problem for him in this deck. I thought the Avenger of Zendikar was bad. This card is even worse. Even board wipes don't solve this situation because he just casts it again and then casts it again. If the game goes very much longer, Kyle will win with this card. It's very, very bad. And then after that, I will end my turn. All right, on to draw. Okay, I'll play Archetype of Imagination. That'll trigger a Johnny's Chosen and Herald of the Pantheon. I'll gain one life and I'll get a 2-2 two -two white cat. But and more importantly, all your stuff has flying now and none of our stuff has flying. Uh, yeah. So now I've got a, um, an unblockable 12-12 and, and there's no one else who's taking this damage. Mel, uh, I will move to combat 12 at Mel and we're gonna go five at right, Kyle. Uh, I don't have any flyers. Yeah. I cannot have flying, so I have no response. And I got nothing. Mel! A flying island, huh? Things I would not have expected. Yeah, how do you die to a flying island? Huh! Island! So heavy! <laughs> <laughs> so Mel goes down to negative one. I'm down to 20. That's a it goes to negative. So. Yeah. <laughs> Giving all of Cash's creatures flying and removing flying from everyone else's creatures is really bad for me. My entire game plan right now is to overwhelm the board with worm tokens. Now it doesn't matter because I can't block and I have very low life. I could be dead really quickly. Okay, on your end step, I'm gonna activate Mind Stone to sacrifice it and draw a card, and then I will... It's pretty funny. This is it a miracle card? No, oh. <laughs> that would've sucked. <laughs> then I will untap and draw. It's not good that Mel went down there because she was one of my allies against these two juggernauts who I feel I'm, I'm behind to both of them right now. Okay, I'm gonna plus Amanatu and draw a card and then put a card from my hand on top. Then I'm going to go to combat, cash. I'm gonna swing at you with a 4-4 that does not have flying anymore. Uh, that's gonna trigger the Sphinx and we're all gonna name a card. I'm gonna name Sarah Avatar. Already? It's, it's already back? Nice. <laughs> wow. Um, I will name Swamp. Uh, Forest. Okay. Oh, look, a Sarah Avatar. I'll put it into my hand. <laughs> yeah, I'll just block with the 2-2 two -two cat. Okay, and so eat the cat. Die. And then I'm gonna play a Boreas Charger. <laughs> This card's really interesting and I like the design. Unfortunately, right now I have the same amount of lands as Kyle, so it's not gonna get me any value that way. And it doesn't even have flying because of that archetype of imagination. I can't do anything else, pass the turn. All right. This is not the time of the game that you wanna be having lackluster turns. Luckily, I have a bunch of answers and things in my hand and it's so scary out there that I'm just gonna have to like hold a bunch of mana up and hope that I can survive for a few turns and formulate some kind of plan. I will go up to 11 on Lord Windgrace and discard a card from my hand, which is a forest card, and then I will draw two. Right now, Cash is still who I'm worried about because his creatures are effectively unblockable, and the only thing of Josh's that I have to deal with is the Planeswalker, which is an ultimate range, so it's back to Planeswalker management for a bit. So I will go to combat. I'll make a second Thopter with haste. And then I'm gonna swing these creatures at you, Cash. And then I will send three of these worms at Aminatu 
and the rest at you, Josh. I will take 10. Go to 29. Ooh, interesting. Okay, uh, no blocks. So I will take seven, mm -hmm. and Aminatu will go down to three loyalty. Ow. That's what she sounds like. Now that I know that Josh can't ult with his commander, I have to get rid of the archetype that is destroying all of my defense. Then I will deal two damage to each creature. Interesting. See, this is how powerful Worm Harvest is. Kyle's actually wiping the board away, killing his own worms, because he knows he can just cast it again. And now, without Cassius there as a foil to Kyle, I'm pretty scared we're just gonna get overrun by worms, which is gross. I don't want to die that way. I'd rather it was little baby turtles. <laughs> and I'll pay one black and pay two life to activate the ability of Blood Tracker to put a plus one plus one counter on it. So it survives the savage. So it survives. Then I'll discard Rakdos Carnarium to retrace Worm Harvest. Now you got 10 lands in there? Yes, you're correct. <laughs> These exchanges are really good for me. Preventing an alt, dealing with the thing that will kill me, and putting a lot more power back on my board. I'm feeling great. Pass turn. All right, untap, draw. I will cast Creeping Renaissance. Oh. I'll choose uh, Enchantments. This is really good. I've kept this card in my hand for quite a while. I wanted to leave the Enchantments in my graveyard to possibly ult, but at this point, my commander costs so much, it's not worth it, so. So how many? Eight. Oh. Sure, Cash gets eight cards back, which is great, but the only one I'm really worried about is that archetype of imagination. <laughs> I can't believe he got it back so quick. I'm just gonna tap for four and play Dawn's Reflection, trigger a Johnny's Chosen, and I'll get a 2-2 two -two cat. And then I will tap for two, and I'll play a Fertile Ground. Oh. That'll trigger a Johnny's Chosen, and I will get a another cat value train you guys both have. Mm -hmm. So I really don't have to worry about the worms. I don't have to account for them because I'm just flying over the top. So I'm feeling good about where I'm at at this point. So right now Cassius has 19 power on the board. Next turn, if he plays the archetype, all of it will have flying and Kyle's at 18. Cassius could kill Kyle. This is a huge development. Yes, okay. Untap and I will draw. Like Josh is just somehow always has something up his sleeve. It drives me crazy. Like I, he's got a full hand. I will plus Aminatu. Draw a card. Put a card on top of my library. And then I'm gonna play Cloud Form. That's gonna manifest the top card of my library and then enchant it. So I have a manifested card <gasps> with flying and hexproof. Okay, so Cassius and Kyle are concentrating on each other. If they ignore me over here, I, I might be able to steal this game. And this cloud form manifest creature is a big piece of the puzzle. If you've been paying attention, I bet you can guess what it is. And then I'm going to think I have to swing at Lord Windgrace or... for four in the air. And that's gonna trigger Conundrum Sphinx and I will name... If it's anything but a land card. Yeah, I'm gonna name Island. Swamp. Island. Um, so we flip. Huh, well. Yeah, I have no flyers, so uh, Wind Grace will take four. We're putting him down to seven. Uh, I can't do anything else, so go ahead. Okay, uh, untapping, drawing. Cash has 19 power on the board, and I can't block once the archetype is out, so I have to find two life from somewhere. I will go back to nine on Lord Wind Grace, discard a land card, so then I will draw two instead of one. So what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? He really needs an answer to that archetype. He has to kill one of Cash's creatures, or he has to get his life total above 19. So I will tap one, two, three, and I will play Retreat to Hagra. Oh, Retreat to Hagra. This card is perfect. It allows Kyle to gain just enough life. He might live through Cash's attack. And then I will play Bajuka Bog for the turn, targeting your graveyard. Retreat to Hagra triggers. I'll choose each opponent loses one life and I gain one life. And he has exactly 19 power that he's gonna have in the air, so. Uh, so, I'm gonna activate the Warp Landscape now. I'll put a Swamp into play. And I'll have Retreat to Hagra. Uh, each opponent would lose one life and I would gain one life. Okay. Puts you out of range of immediate death. Okay, okay, I found the two life, hanging on by a thread. It's a lot of dancing. A lot of dancing. Just maybe stay alive. Okay, go to combat. Uh, cash, I'm gonna send these 10 one ones at you. I will block three of them. Okay, so damage goes through. I'm gonna lose three of these. And I'll take seven. Second main, gonna discard a land card. Retrace worm harvest. So I'm making 13 worms. 
In any other situation, getting 13 more 1-1s one -ones would be awesome, but I am still one point away from dying. I'm not feeling very good about this. Okay, I am done after that. On top. Kyle's gotta be getting rid of because he's got the worms every turn. He's got a huge engine with the worms. It's just becoming more every turn. And so he's definitely the target to just, to get rid of. We gotta get rid of him now or we never will. So first a sigil of empty throne and then archetype of imagination. So I will get two cat triggers from a Johnny's Chosen. And then one angel. And then one angel token. This is pretty interesting. Normally, I could fly in and finish Kyle off, but because of the archetype of imagination, I don't have flying anymore, and he has a million worms to block them. I just gotta cross my fingers and hope things play out the way I'm hoping they will. Cash is doing a lot, but it looks like my calculation is still correct. I don't see any additional points of damage being dealt, so I think I might live. I'll tap one to play Soul Snare. I will get one more cat. Oh, man. <laughs> And one more angel. <laughs> okay. You know you're doing well when you're into the other players so <laughs> play Matt. That's why you had to take me out first. You just need a ter <laughs> you just need a territory? Yeah. So I'm just gonna swing everything at Kyle. Okay. I have no flyers by definition. It is exactly 19 damage. Go to one. Oh man. Big swing. So I'm feeling like I'm in a decent spot. Like I didn't think I could come back into this game, but you know, I, I've come back, I've got good board state. I'm thinking that I have at least one untap, one more turn to try and come out with this victory. I end my turn. So both of them are really scary. Both of their boards are better than mine. I think I have a route to victory here though, and it doesn't feel like it's gonna get any better for me. I'm gonna go for it. On your end step, I'm gonna tap seven, and I'm gonna flip over my manifested card, which is uh -oh. Sarah Avatar, Woo! which has hexproof but not flying because of the archetype. Uh, it's back. I think I should have seen it because it was revealed, but you know how these things go. I forgot, and now it's back, and it's gonna kill me, isn't it? And I'm gonna mortify on... Archetype, right? No, on an angel token. I know what you're thinking. Why don't you kill the archetype? Then your Sarah avatar will have flying. Huh? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna admit, it straight up confuses me. When he does something like that, I already know that he has an answer for the archetype. So I knew, I knew at this point, Josh, in his head, he had me dead. Then I'm gonna untap. So the last few turns, all I've been drawing is removal spells, but in this case, that's actually gonna go in my favor. Then I'm going to tap four. I'm gonna return to dust. And it's my main phase, so I'm gonna exile the archetype and the sigil. This is the moment I've been planning for, I've been sequencing for, I've been getting ready. And then banishing stroke the last angel. Oh. So I get rid of all of Cash's blockers. And now my creatures have flying. And because the Sarah avatar is so huge and Kyle's life total is so low. Then I'm gonna go to combat. I'm gonna swing four at Kyle and 26 at Cassius. I've got no flyers. It's bigger than my life total. It's over for me. I'm dead. <laughs> I thought that Josh had won the game at this point, but uh, he forgot something. And then I realize. Oh no! Uh oh! It, he gets flying back. When the archetype is gone, Josh's creatures get flying again, which was what he was counting on to end the game. But my creatures get flying back too. He can block. He can block. But before blocks, I do have the Conundrum Sphinx trigger. That's true. So I need to name a spell that could kill the Emissary of Grudges before it can block. And you'd have to put it in your hand and play it. Right, it would yes. have to be castable with what yeah. I've got. Um, I'm gonna say Crib Swamp. I'm gonna say Mountain. Uh, or it's oh, Basilica, yeah. that doesn't get it done. Okay, I will block. Are you sure you wanna do that? Pretty sure I wanna do that. Okay, yeah, Conundrum Sphinx Thanks, gets blocked. Uh, yeah. That was a bad miscalculation on my part. I thought I had it. I thought I had it. I mean, my only hope is to top deck something here, so I'm gonna plus Aminatu, draw a card, and uh, put the same card back on top. Yeah. <laughs> Pass the turn, Kyle. Man. <laughs> I think it's just academic at this point. I have more than enough damage to kill him, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm going to send the team out of curiosity, how many worms is it? That is 20 worms. Well, I only have one thing to say to that. Good game, Kyle. Oh, thank you so Good much. Good game, everybody. Wow. Good game. Oh. Good game, man. Good game, man. And then I got overrun by... There's a worm.
I win. My favorite time of year in Magic every single year is when the Commander Precons come out. The synergy and the decks are, are awesome. And I think that it could be great for beginner players because you get to see a lot of different cards. It's a really easy product to just pick up and hand to a friend and just start battling. I think it's awesome when we can get cards that excite us, not just that we play with, but ones we want to make our own and have our own, our own stories around. And I'm really looking forward to pulling out all the pieces and all the new cards and new commanders that are in these and building brand new decks around them. This is the best time of year. This is Commander Christmas. Oh yeah, I'm excited. Two of the commanders I'm definitely gonna have to build the deck around. Playing commander with primarily planeswalkers was really interesting. Like having the planeswalkers there made the pacing of the game a lot different. So that was a lot of fun to just like have that tension there behind the game the whole time. It was awesome to play with everyone. It's the best possible experience. But you know, no matter what happened, I know it's easy to say that when you win, but no matter what happened, I feel like we all played a really good game of magic, a lot of back and forth, so it was, it was great. I, I hope to do it again. All right, you made it to the end of the episode. Congratulations. Huge thanks to Ultra Pro for sponsoring this show for such a long time. They've been a great sponsor for us. You know, if you're going to build one of these new Commander 2018 decks around one of these new Planeswalkers, and who am I kidding? We're all going to be doing that, right? Well, you're going to want to stand out from the crowd, and one of the ways is to get the matching deck boxes, the matching playmats, the matching sleeves. How cool are you going to be if you roll up with your deck all matching like that? In fact, this episode, we are giving away a ton of that stuff. And uh, I was about to announce how you enter the contest, but I'm actually I'm feeling a little weird that Jimmy hasn't been present at all for this show. So I'm going to let his disembodied voice do that. It's actually very simple to enter. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash commandcast. Click share to your public profile on that post and you'll be entered. If you're on Twitter, tweet a link to this video. Use the hashtag game nights and that's going to enter you as well. Thank you, Jimmy's voice. And remember, you have exactly one week from the release of this episode to enter. And then we're going to be announcing the winners on Facebook and Twitter. So get out there, get to hashtagging and sharing and all of that. Good luck. I hope you win. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. During this episode, I will be salty. <laughs> you will see the salt on my face. You might be able to smell it through the lenses, through your computer screens. That's not how computers work. Well, these computers will look this way. Because I'm that salty. Salt I'm that salty. <laughs>